Hi, I'm Jeff Oxenford with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. In this video, we'll talk about hydrant inspection and flushing. All fire hydrants in a water system need to be inspected on a regular basis. It is recommended that dry barrel hydrants should be inspected twice a year, typically in the spring and fall. Wet barrel hydrants should be inspected annually. Inspection is needed to ensure a high degree of confidence that hydrants will perform properly in an emergency. A number of circumstances can affect a hydrant's performance, including vandalism, accidental damage, wear and tear, or mechanical malfunction. Hydrants may be flushed periodically to improve water quality. This can be done at the same time as inspection, or these can be separate activities. We'll talk about inspection of a fire hydrant in seven steps. The first step in an inspection process is to ensure a safe work site. Position truck and use signs, cones, and barriers as needed to ensure safety of the work crew and passing traffic. Look for anything that can be damaged by the flushing activity. This includes storm drains, nearby construction activity, and customer items such as trash cans. Divert water as necessary. Control sediment that may enter stormwater drains. Wear protective equipment that includes a reflective safety vest, safety glasses, and protective footwear. Always open a hydrant from behind. Do not stand in front of a nozzle caps when opening. Next, inspect the landscaping to ensure that it does not impact the operation of the fire hydrant. The large nozzle must be 18 inches above the ground. Prune landscaping three feet away. Make sure there are no obstructions that may prevent easy coupling of hoses. Visually inspect the hydrant. Verify basic data. Check ID stamp that includes the size and year made. Look for cracks, visible leaking, or signs of vandalism. Check hydrant nozzles and caps. Before you do this, make sure that the hydrant is not charged. Remove caps and check conditions of the threads and gaskets. Clean with a wire brush and lubricate with a graphite-based lubricant as needed. Lubricate the operating nut. Straighten or repair caps and chains as needed. Then test the hydrant. Put a pressure gauge on one of the smaller two and a half inch nozzles. Slowly open the hydrant three to five turns and allow air to escape and water to begin to flow. Then fully open the hydrant and check for ease of operations. Check for leaks and listen to see if the hydrant continues to run. Then document the pressure. Slowly close the hydrant and avoid water hammer by closing slowly. Shut down the hydrant completely, open air release on pressure gauge and see if it drains. Next locate the hydrant valve and insert the valve key. Ensure that a diffuser and dechlorination is in place. Fully open the hydrant to get a flow of water. Close the hydrant valve and ensure that the flow stops completely. Open the hydrant valve again to flush the hydrant line. Turn off the hydrant and check that the hydrant barrel drains. Some utilities may choose to flush the hydrant at the same time as inspection. In this case, inspect the hydrant as previously described. Before flushing, make sure that you are prepared for the volume of water that will be discharged. You may want to notify customers that flushing will occur. If they use water when you're flushing, they may see some discoloration. You may also want to notify your treatment plant or flow control that a large volume of water will be used. The procedure for flushing a hydrant is very similar to that during inspection. Open the hydrant slowly, document the start time, take an initial water quality sample if appropriate, and then run the hydrant to meet a goal. Goals can be based on criteria such as time, for example, 20 minutes, volume, you want to flush two or three pipe volumes, or until the line visibly clears or you meet a water quality goal such as temperature, turbidity, or chlorine residual. If using a water quality goal, establish a procedure if conditions do not improve. 
When the goal has been reached, turn off the hydrant slowly again to avoid water hammer. Document time and calculate the volume of water used. Record keeping and follow up. Record information that includes pressure, any discrepancies in hydrant information, problems observed, and the date serviced. Document when repairs are needed and prepare the appropriate work order. In some cases, repairs are made during the inspection process. If so, document the repairs made. If the hydrant is inoperable, bag it, notify the fire department, and schedule for repair. For more information about hydrant inspection and other topics, visit our website at rcap.org.